We have a quorum. So let's open that 632. Okay, first order is uh, minutes of December 14th. Kevin? Charlie, aye. Uh, Marilyn? Marilyn, aye. Dick? Aye. Norm? Aye. And Tim has still not joined us. Okay, next item is uh, well, the public hearing notice from Hubbardston. Anybody, any comments or any? Anything about that? This would have liked to have known uh, what it was about. Mm -hmm. So I think I'm, oh, I'm going to look it up between now and the next meeting and find yeah. out what Article 6 is. Okay. Be interesting. Yeah, I, you know, I suppose. Hmm. Rate of development. Because normally it's the other way around. They, they're copying on us. Yeah. So. Okay. Uh, right, I make a motion to adjourn. Yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't bother me at all. <laughs> but uh, I, I'm about to miss the latest episode of Life Below Zero, whether yeah. it's going out there or on TV. I was going to say, you're living it right now. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> anyway, okay, next item uh, ANR Lot, Ridge Road, Wachusett Road. Julian, I gather that you're here for that. Yes. So, what do you have to say for yourself? Mm -hmm. We've got a piece of property owned by Williams Audley, who uh, couldn't make it here tonight, just the weather and all that. But it's a piece of property off of Ridge Road, and this is Ridge Road here. Wachusett Road is here, <clears throat> and uh, we've created typical R60 zoning lots, 200 feet of frontage, minimum acre and a half each block. And every one of these lots meets the zoning as set forth in the zoning bylaws. With the exception of the estate lot? No, this is a uh, Yes, we'll have to come back for this one line here for the uh, special permit for uh, for the state lot. Correct. That's lot number three E. And then we also, you guys have seen to like to see a. Uh, where will the houses be? Where will the driveways be in the future? So we, we came up with a schematic with showing house, driveway, house, driveway, house, driveway, right down the whole line for each and every lot. Okay. Questions, comments from the board? Mine is, it's under 61A, and I would not like to see this thing brought forth as a ANR at this time until um, if you're going to pull it, because once you do all the work and then you will, if you don't pull the ANR, 
town has right of first refusal. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I'm saying, why, why go to this energy unless you're going to pull it? And if you do pull it, I was hoping to have confirmation uh, tonight here that maybe you had done it, and, but uh, no, there, there is no confirmation of that. The first, <clears throat> the first step is it is on the chapter land, and the process to get it out of chapter land is the town has first refusal, and the monetary amount is based on an appraisal of the property. So Mrs. Ali wanted to go with what's by right, what can he get on the property? This is what he can get. So now if he goes <coughs> to get it out of chapter land, there's your basis. So that's why we're proposing it this way. But as you propose it the other way, the town would not have to pay as much. <laughs> yeah, well, Mrs. Ali is, wanting to get what he can get out of his property. I mean, that's, well, I, that's what it is. It is, but there again, I'm going to who originally owned the piece of property and, and her wishes was never to have it built. I can't speak, I don't know. I know you don't, that. because <laughs> it's, it's something that a long time ago. It's, yeah. it's, um, Nor, Nor, Mr. Tim. Yes. Hey, I've got a question for you. I thought and, and again, I could be wrong. On lot, I, I apologize, is it 45 that's right there on Ridge Road and Wachusett Road? Is that Ridge? I can't tell what road that is. Lot 4S. Oh, go down, go down, 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 down. Uh, yep, lot, I'm sorry, 4S. 4S, is that what it is? yep, yep. Yeah, that, that frontage is on two different roads. I didn't think we allowed that because we had a town meeting and we shot that down, didn't we? Did not. It did not. No, it didn't pass. It didn't pass, so I don't see how you can do that with that piece of property because you're using frontage on two different roads. No. No, it's allowed. It's allowed. It was originally Wachusett Street, Tim. Well, regardless, well, know, if the frontage is contiguous, it's contiguous frontage from here to here. We're allowed to have 200 feet of frontage. There's no bylaw or zoning law that says it has to be on one road or the other. Oh, I thought that's what we shot down at the town meeting that no. it had to be all on one road. So I, I apologize. I just, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I have no problem. But I thought, because I remember Mr. Patterson was at questioning that on Weaver Road and Campbell Street because that corner lot, part of it was on Weaver Road, which is Correct. a town road. Uh, yep, you're right. He was um, Campbell Street, and I didn't think that was going to be allowed, but if I'm wrong, I'm good. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Okay. And it does appear that Wachusett Road is a town road. It is a town road, absolutely. Uh, Actually, the Tom's actually working on it. Yeah, the, the only thing I would say is, and this is a, a, a request from Anita Carlson, uh, that we, and, and I'm going to frame it a little bit differently, uh, that we would get a document from the owners agreeing to a name change on the road. I, I believe he would be open to that. Because that's we, very confusing. We don't want to watch this street and no. watch this the road. No. Uh, and that agree. makes very good sense to us. Uh, absolutely. So I agree with that 100%. Norm, the, the other question I had when I looked at this, and, and Julie, you can probably answer that, I saw two Princeton town lines on this, one that looked like it was the old uh, rock fence, and then the other that's actually a town line that looks like a surveyor did from the plan book. Yeah, so is that can, something we got to get fixed? <clears throat> no. Let me tell you how this has gone about. Okay, cool, thank you, sir. The stone wall, which is the higher line, has been considered the town line since the king owned the land. <laughs> all the lots going down both directions, all plans on file, have called that stone wall. It goes up behind Harry Johnson's all the way to Ridge Road, and it goes this way back to, to, your, to Dick's area. And then in 2020, the city of Worcester purchased this piece of property and they had a survey company out there and they 
located the actual town corner monuments, which is, I don't know, five, six, seven miles that way and towards Holden this way with GPS, mm -hmm. GIS, GPS, and they put coordinates on it. And technically, that's the town line. And Julian, you're saying where the dotted lines are. This, this dotted line is the town line, according to if they ever mapped out the town of Rutland and the town of Princeton. So my next question is, we got a and our property in two towns. What do we do with, on that? Well, I, we, had that experience. I'll explain that also. We are not changing any of the configuration in the town of Princeton. Therefore, we're not creating any new lines in Princeton. So we don't need to go to Princeton. That's why I actually, on this lot here, held it from that line so that we didn't need to deal with two towns. What we'll end up doing, we also put a note on a plan, if you slide down, we gave some areas of how much land is in Princeton and how much is in Rutland. So when this gets recorded at the Registry of Deeds, they will notify the town of Rutland once the plan gets recorded in the town of Princeton, and if the town of Princeton so chooses to send a tax bill to this lot, they have every right to do so. But we didn't change any lot lines, so we don't need to have planning board approval or anything like that. But we will send a copy of the plan to the town. But shouldn't, Norm, haven't we got A and R plans from other towns when they were bordering or possibly going into Rutland? If, have we gotten Courtesy. If, if I did this, if you slide this back sideways, not the other way, so I can see this going on. You'd be completely correct, Tim, if, if I brought this line for this first lot yep. to that wall right across where my finger's going, I created, oh, I created a new line in the town of Princeton, therefore I have to go to the town of Princeton for endorsement. So if you're I saying, don't, Julian, lot, lot 2E, which is the... Uh, uh, estate lot actually that little corner goes back into yes correct okay you, yeah, so you, you literally didn't change nothing in princeton touch princeton i see what you're saying yeah we did and that to you know, avoid more confusion what about over on the other side same thing now? if you go over to that one we did not create anything new in the town that's was there and still there we didn't create any new lot lines Okay, all right. Good enough. I just thought I would ask. No, I, that's good. I, that was a that was a big challenge on this end. On in two thousand and twenty, they decided to to pick the town line as a different. I area. didn't want to step on. <laughs> that's well, I know. So it is what it is. I just have one question um, on that lot. We were just talking about up in that far corner. You got the driveways in Princeton, correct? Yeah. Is that does that propose any problems? You just have to go to Princeton for a driveway permit. And mailbox? Um, that'll be, Post. well, it'll probably be a Rutland, a Rutland address because the house is going to be in Rutland. We make sure that's good with the fire department. They won't have any confusion we'll have on their GPSs we'll, or whatever. We'll have to deal with that when we get to that point by right. how they address it. Julian, that's the only way to bring it in because don't I see wetlands everywhere else in yeah, that frontage? There is. <laughs> and there's actually a driveway there already. Okay. But we'll, we'll work that out. So, Norm, this is a question for me. So, I get what, what Julian's doing and, and the Zotleys are doing. I, I'm okay with that. And, and they can spend the money to do this. Uh, design and get the A and R approved, but and again, this maybe I'm stepping on select board toes and I'm overstepping my bounds in the planning board. But do they have to put this land for 61A in front of the select board, and then they have to send out to the CONCON, the uh, Ag Commission, and the planning board first right of refusals? Yes. Does that still have to be done? Yes. Yeah. Okay, that's unless, all I was asking. I'm unless they just pay to the make bad sure. taxes. Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to make sure that that process is still in place. Yes, it and, is. Okay, good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <coughs> <coughs>
I, I, I'm just a little bit curious because uh, last week uh, with Peter Crane, we looked up the assessor's uh, data page okay. uh, on this property, and it did list it under 61A, but it, there was something like discontinued in, I don't know, 2018 or something on that idea. Uh, yet it appeared they were still getting the tax benefit. Now, uh, Board of Assessors says it's good until the until October of this year, I believe. You have to file 61A stuff every year for the Board of Assessors. Yeah. But the thing is, the date that they put on that, that, that it wasn't, was several years back. Well, I went to the Board of Assessors and that's what she told me, so... Mm. And Norm, I've got it. one, hopefully this is my last question. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, Marilyn's not there to kick me. I'm not close to her. <laughs> <laughs> um, I notice on the left side of the drawing of the A&R plan for the, what we're looking at now, it looks like the house driveways go into the right of way. And I guess maybe this is a question for Director Buckley. Are those solid lines that are considered um, Property lines, is that where the, the road's going to be? Or is the dot, little dotted line, it looks like a cart trail, is where the road's going to be? This, this, we're talking where I have my finger right now. Okay, yeah, that's the road. See. The road is in between these two lines. It's it's a gravel road, so it's it's no real uh, line. Okay. So Could somebody please um, just zoom in for me? I, I can't see it from here, I'm sorry. Is yeah, Joe, that's what I was saying. Right. It looks like that I see these dark property lines. That's and then the I right see of the driveways. Line. It looks like the driveways are going to this little, I don't know, 10 foot, 15 right. foot. They're, they're, uh, this is just for illustration that the driveway is coming off of this road here that we're not, I, I hate to say the word, creating any illusory lots. Yeah, well, that's, <laughs> that's, Julia, that's what I was trying to get at is. Is the intent is again? I've heard that this road was going to get fixed again. I don't know the whole details of it, but was the intent to widen it to a, a town-sized road? No, I don't believe it's going to be widened that wide. It's going to be what Mr. What, what Director Buckley decides that is a safe, passable road to. Okay. So, so that's just it, well, it, whether it's here or here. As long as it's it's connecting the road here, it's not coming. Somewhere else. That's all. Is just to, to give a a basic. I, I'm just. You know, all I'm trying to find out is where the frontage is. Right. Is. Right. Yeah. yeah. This is the existing gravel that was in place now when we did the survey, but that's being changed as we well last fall. Because the, the heavy lines are the right of way. The heavy right line is the right of way. And just like in the subdivision. Like any other road. In the subdivision, the driveway. Goes into it. Goes through yes. the edge of the right of way to get to the pavement. So, yes. so the actual property lines for for this A and R will be out up to the dotted line. Right correct. There. The solid the line. line. The solid. The solid line. line and solid end. Go slide this up, and you can see on Ridge Road. Okay. See Ridge Road. This this is the actual asphalt line right there. You can okay. See how I'm coming into it. That's actually the paved the paved line on Ridge Road. I I guess I'm I'm con somebody can help me. I'm confused on on the property lines because my property lines go out to Palm Augustine, yet I give the town a ten foot right of way into my property. This looks like the no 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 you don't ends. no it doesn't Tim. Your line ends. No. Say if this is fifty six, your line yep. ends just like this shows. Your driveway goes across a little grass strip or woods or brush, and then there's pavement. But on, yep. on your road, it's it's actually 56 is wider. It's it's probably 50 or 60 feet wide. Okay. So I apologize. I didn't know yep. that. No, it's side. just it's the right away line mm -hmm. that we deal with. Okay. So the, okay, I apologize. In, in my previous state, the you own the right this away, the but you but the town had author, authorization to do anything at it. Line. I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. Oh no! I just—it's it, it, my knowledge from a different state. We, we in in my previous house ownership in a different state, 
we own that that right away area up to the road but the town had full right to do anything with it so i had to mow it take care of it do all that stuff i couldn't leave it up to the town to do any uh maintenance on it, it was up to because it was listed on my deed and then i was get, and then the town was given a right away for the road so okay good enough i just learned something new i appreciate it could i speak to the condition of the roadway please yes Who's chairing the meeting? I am, Norm. Norm, thank you. Through the chair, um, it was brought to the town's attention that this was a public road. It had just not been used in many years. Um, once we were able to legally ascertain it was a public road, we had it surveyed just to verify what we own and what we don't own out there. The dark lines that were just discussed actually are the limit of the public right of way. When this was brought before the select board, they asked DPW to bring it up to gravel road standards of the time of when the road would have been used. So um, we're looking at six, eight, ten inches of gravel in places. Um, I don't think the road's going to be any of any type of standard that you could um, speak to, with the except that it should be passable by at least one car, um, and the roadway surface should remain, you know, the wearing surface should remain stable, and the road should drain and not flood. Um, that's all our intent is at this time, and that's all the board has asked us to do. I hope that clears it up. Yep. Director Buckley, is through through the chair, is is that area up there water and sewered, or is that going to be well accepted? Okay. There are no town services that they could take advantage of in that vicinity. Thank you. I have one quick question for the board, though, if that's all right. Yes. Is Rich scenic? No. Thank you. It, it, it was going to be proposed to be designated as such, but it never came to the town meeting. Look at my back, I'm sorry. <laughs> it may be to the next one. But yeah, it might, it, might be, it might be brought to the next town meeting. We don't know. But right now it's not. What I can tell you from our, our work out there is portions of this road are quite damp. Some of these parcels are wet. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Joe, I'm just, I'm just kind of curious. It doesn't really make much difference, but I'm just noticing, you know, you said you had the, the, uh, the roadway surveyed, and at least looking on this plan, the right-of-way is definitely variable. Is, is there any explanation for that, or is it just that's the way it... Yes, because is? there are stone walls along this whole roadway. Ah. On the property, there was a, a plan in the early 1900s mm -hmm. that showed what you said, road going through with stone walls, and Zodley does not own that portion of between the face of wall and face so of wall. So right away it's actually determined by the so stone that's, wall. So that's why it's a variable. Okay. okay. That's why that happens. That's a good answer. I actually tried to get it consistent with, um, and the surveyor we hired, Jarvis Land Survey, um, and our council advised that we have to go s uh, center of stone wall to center of stone wall to establish the right of way. Okay. That's fine. That's good. Like I said, I was just curious. Believe me, I wanted it all one with. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I can see that. Well, but then what happens is you end up having property that goes to the town or goes back to the property owner, and it's not clean. Yeah. It's You're better off to mess. stick with the variable width. Yeah. Well, you have variable width snow plows anyway, don't you? <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> yeah. So, Norm, and again, and maybe Dick, one of you two, because I, I haven't been over there. I don't know this area other than maybe if I was over there during the ice storm helping clear. I, I don't remember. Is this somewhat similar to Britain now? No. <laughs> I'd say not. <laughs> okay. Maybe closer to Sassawana? Yeah. Okay. All right. That's good. Thanks, Norm. That gets me an idea of what I'm, what I'm, what I'm dealing with. We put um, a lot of work into Sassawana. That's in much better condition than this road is at this time. Uh, do, you, do, you, do you feel you would be bringing it up to a, the approximately the conditions of Lake Britain or the Sassawana? Uh, I, probably closer to Sassawana, and that's what the board had asked us to do. Mm -hmm. Okay. It would be a gravel road, 12, 15 feet wide. Um, uh, the wearing surface will be compressed gravel. We've already made some drainage improvements. Um, the funding is in place. We just um, 
ran out of time this construction season. DPW has seen some sizable cutbacks in staff. Yep. Okay, any other questions, comments? Okay, I think the only other uh, comment, and I'm not going to make a big deal out of it, is uh, the payment for the A and R? Uh, you're creating 22 lots, mm -hmm. but they're on both sides of the road. I'm assuming one side of the road is A lot, and the other side is A lot to start with. Okay, so you need 50 bucks more. So yeah, <laughs> but I, I I don't know. I I'll, I'll leave it to the rest of the board whether we really feel we have to get that extra 50. Is is mm -hmm. if that's what it calls for, that's what it should be. Whatever you, whatever you want. So if you need to bring the check, we'll bring it up. Okay, Marilyn. No, I agree. Agree, Kevin. Yeah, I agree with taking Marilyn. So okay. another fifty dollars. Yeah, Tim. Oh, I agree. Add the, just to make it fair, bring in, add the fifty dollars in. Okay. Agreed. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. You take cash, I can leave you 50 bucks now to stop it. Keep it rolling. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> any, any, anything further? The only thing, Norm, I got a question is the drawing that we have in front of us right now on the screen says no name. So I, when, when this mm -hmm. A&R gets recorded, and it says Wachusett Road, and then I, I'm guessing this is a plan that's recorded. Is that correct? Um, what are you saying? No name. Right there. Yeah, right there. Oh. Yeah. See. That that so, that's, that that's not right. from the assessor's office. Yeah, that's no, that's not the plan we're recording. So <laughs> you know, I, I don't think it would be official for a name. No, the official name is Washusa Road. Yeah. Yeah. It is Washusa Road, yeah. correct. Yeah. But I, I know Mrs. Otley talked about if the town wants to change that name mm -hmm. to make it yeah. whatever you, whatever process we need to do, he will do. I, I, would, I would just like to have something in writing from the agreeing. Right, so he'll, I'll, I'll talk to him and I'll come up with what he'd like to do and then whatever process we need to do, we can do that. Yeah, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think you would have to do anything. I think that's strictly was the select board. In fact, yes, we looked at we looked it up uh, just today. It, okay. it's, it's just a process through the select board to town meeting. Okay. So. All right, that's it. Thanks. Okay. Uh, <coughs> anybody else? Anything on this one? Not on this part of it. And I'm. <laughs> We're, we're, if we're done here, this part. Whoops, I have a hand raised out there. Peter Crane, Nate Sway. Uh, Julian, I know Norm said they, that current people don't need to take action, and that's technically true, but it might be best rather than having the, the town heads decide what the name of the road should be. We know, we've heard from Anita, the town clerk, that she wants that road name changed because it's a public safety issue. Mm -hmm. So if they were to come up with recommendations for names, it might make it a little easier to get through the process rather than having okay. somebody in the town figure out what a better name would be. Okay. Yeah. Suggest it and how it I'll, 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 yeah, I'll exactly. ask Mrs. Otto. Mm -hmm. now, Norm is right. It comes up to the select board to put an article in the warrant, but yeah. that's the process. Oh, exactly wrote. Yeah, <laughs> for example. Does anybody want to hold um. it? I, I don't think any of this falls to the Zotleys at all to name it. This is the board only. It's the town. It's this the is the town, town road. road. So yeah, it, it would only be a suggestion. Right. It, it right. Yes, that was my, that was my yeah. point. That it makes it, it it'll make it smoother if we can if suggestions are put forth to select the board. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No. Okay. So. Norm, to, to Joe's point, doesn't Anita have to bring that to the select board? Mm -hmm. And maybe Peter, you can answer that. Uh, mm -hmm. It does not say 
who needs to bring it to the select board? All it says is that it could be changed by town meeting vote. That's the only okay. way to change it. So the select board needs to put an article in the warrant to change the name of the road. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Anything more? I have to say that uh, I don't know where it stands ethic-wise, but just to let you know that my wife is uh, cousin to Billy Zotley. So I don't know if it's far enough away and everything else. That yeah, I think so. Just let it out there. Kissing cousins? Uh, that I've never heard. No. <laughs> I, I would not doubt it. <laughs> well, I, I think Norman, as long as Dick's not, how do I put this, not benefiting financially or have any um, building or house issues on this, I don't see an ethics problem with it. No, I, you know, I don't really. The only you know, thing I have, uh, and I, I don't know if I want to do it because. Because of my relationship with uh, Kyla's mother and Billy's wife, late wife, so that's all. Look, then Dick, vote your heart. That's what I tell you to do. No, I don't want it to stop right at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> and besides that, Marilyn said if I get out of hand, she's going to hit me with a cane. Because I really was going to flare up, Julian. I, I really would because I, of. I'm sorry. Oh, I, I understand. Uh, because of I know that things have changed as as perks because right, a thousand feet, less than a thousand feet for crying out loud. Uh, you know, Lenny tried to perk and and oh, I understand. Thank, thank God I stayed there at that perk hole because uh, it failed. So, anyways, anything else? I'll entertain a motion. Somebody? Yes, Norm, I'll motion to endorse um, the A&R for uh, Wachusett Road, or A&Rs for Wachusett Road, mm -hmm. and, and uh, it, let me rephrase that, Julian, there's no, the A&Rs aren't on Ridge Road, they're just on no, Wachusett. they're on Ridge Road and on Wachusett Road. Okay. That's what I thought I better. Yeah. So I'll make a motion to endorse A and R's, um, or this A and R on uh, Wachusett Road and Ridge Road. I'll second. Second. Is there any further discussion? I think we've got it pretty well. Okay. Uh, Hearing none, roll call vote. Tim? Aye. Uh, Kevin? Aye. Uh, Marilyn? Aye. Dick? Abstain. Abstain. Norm? Aye. Uh, the motion passes. With four yeses and one abstention. And now, um, what is the next step? I got the 50 bucks. Do I get yeah, my just drop it off tomorrow with the top right. I'd rather not. <laughs> how, how do I, uh, I appreciate it. Tamika, would you have it? I don't think, I think the money should be. Cash. They usually say we shouldn't take cash. I get it. No paper trail. All right, I'll have them write a check. Okay. I just don't want it to hold, be held up because. Oh, I think it'll be signed. There's nothing left. So when, when could I, because the first question I'm going to get asked is, do you have my lot? I said, well, no, not yet. So is it like a week from now? Or? It'll be signed as soon as the board can get up to the office. Okay. So we're going to get two signatures here tonight. Okay. And then we need the other two members to come to the office as soon as possible. All right. So the next week or so. Sources, so yeah. Do okay. You, you do have a mylar? I have the mylar right here. The mylar, yeah. Okay. You, need, you don't have enough signatures. Okay. Yeah. But you get two of them, so that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you have time? I have one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. Those of us present, we will sign up. All right, I'll yeah. drop the check off tomorrow and we'll go from there. Thank you very much. What's the next thing? Just to let you know, there used to be a good road for uh, Sherbring that was part of the 2200 caps.
Really? Way back in the uh, oh. late 70s. I, I was in the 50s and the early 60s. I mean, it was, it was sort of... We're going to go up and take a look. I, I, you know, I've heard of Ridge Road many of times, but I've never really noticed. Right there, right in front of the house. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. A anyway. I, I am a little bit curious, Julian. Are, are they planning on moving ahead with this quickly? To I think he wants to do something. Yeah. That's why he did it for his grand his granddaughter and his daughter are mainly yeah. what he's trying to set up. Yeah. So. But they're not contractors. No. 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 Interesting. Okay. No. Okay. Uh, next item is a uh, contingent public hearing on the special uh, permit for a car wash, uh, which we have uh, information that they are not ready to move any further with this. So I guess this is just going to be a continuation. Yes, yeah, a continuation until the 25th of January, which is the, the very um, in the next meeting. Do I have a motion? Yes. Do I have a motion to continue this hearing to the 25th? Mm -hmm. So move. We Do I have a second? I'll second. Any discussion? Mm -hmm. Okay, roll call in favor. Kevin? Aye. Tim? Aye. Marilyn? Aye. Dick? All right. No, all right. Thank you. Okay, very good. Thank you. It's been cold. Anybody got an extra pen? This is part of the box I'm here for you. All right. Great, thanks. Can I get that? Copies of the A&R for this last one. Now it's going to be the last. <laughs> Okay, next we have all of the uh, that works right out. Thank you. subdivision uh, administration starting with uh, Maple Hill. What, one second, please. When yeah. was this thing extended to? 20, uh, the 25th of January. 25th. Thank you. Okay, uh, Maple Hill, let's see, the latest we have is a December 27th. Uh, nope, there's uh, one from January 6th, nor or January 7th. Is there? That came in. Uh, I don't think it's in the packet. I think it was sent out by David uh, this week. Right, the board has all the information. Uh, if you're here tonight, you have a paper copy back up. Otherwise, you just have the electronic copy. Yeah. Okay. So for Maple Hill, there's December 27th from the consulting engineer. Uh, there's a response from the developer January 6th. There's further correspondence from the consulting engineer January 7th. And then there's a staff letter for January 5th that applies to all of these. Oh, I didn't see the chance. And we also have a display on the screen if you want to use that as a reference. Okay. Uh, I, it appears to me that basically not much has really happened on Maple Hill. 
Uh, there is some work that still needs to be done, but it really cannot be done in this season. So, what Norm? The one thing that bothered me is, again, when Carl puts stuff in bold, it, it bothers me, <laughs> and it's uh, it says on the January seventh letter from Carl. It is recommended that the developer contact Joe Buckley to discuss the puddling remedy. Right. And I guess I was going to ask through the chair, Director Buckley, has that happened? Yes, I did talk to the superintendent. I did a field visit, uh, as did some of my staff. We did not find excessive puddling. More importantly, um, I, I don't think that Carl's observations were unfounded by any means. It's just remedies would be um not 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 so much cost prohibitive shy of tearing the whole road up doing it all over again that that's all you really could do and it's so flat there i don't know if you accomplish anything okay i just so all i wanted to make sure was that the conversation happened and if you're satisfied um being a dpw uh, director i'm good i just I didn't see any feedback that uh, that had that had happened, so I just wanted to dot the I's and cross the T's. So I'm good, thanks. No, I appreciate that. And um, he, uh, like I said, uh, their superintendent, Mr. Larson, did contact me, um, and we did actually go look at it in the rain. Absolutely. Um, and I went by myself and looked at it. So I, I, I think it'll be all right. All right, good. Yeah, I, I had looked at it, and, and the puddling, that, at least that I saw, it, it seemed to me was definitely in, in the few places it was, was less than a half inch. So, okay, cool. that's pretty hard to correct. And Norm, I'm okay with, with their response because of water shutoffs, sewer shutoffs, electrical boxes, blah, 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 all the above, that the trees aren't relatively balanced. I'm okay with that yeah. because last thing you want to do is put roots next to an electrical box. Mm -hmm. That's not going to work out well down the road. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, well, Tim, what are you trying to say? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm as working for Eversource. I, I I fully understand, Joe, your tree issues now. <laughs> with with sewer lines, electrical lines, gas piping lines. Yeah, I feel your pain way too much now. Yeah. I don't know. I keep thinking that I remember in a minute that we already approved that change. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah, so at the last meeting. Yeah. Um, the board officially took action to recognize the change in the spacing for the trees as a field change. Mm -hmm. That's on the record. Mm -hmm. And as a matter of fact, in the January 6th report from the consulting engineer, they acknowledged that outcome mm -hmm. of the board and the vote. So therefore, that's no longer an issue. Okay. That's reflected okay. as in a future a report, which is part of this package here. All right, great. Thanks. That's all I had for Maple Hill. Anybody else? Anything on Maple Hill? Okay, then onward to Bryce Lemon. Oh, uh, boy. <laughs> Mind putting that up on the screen, somebody? Yes. I'm sorry. I'll uh, I'll put away the iced tea. Uh, 
okay. Did it taste good? <laughs> no, it's uncaffeinated. It's basically brown water. <laughs> Just a uh, on that phase three about the roadway being very silty. Uh, I did talk with Tom Larson uh, about that, and he says that you know they're doing their best. They are they are using snow plows to keep the heavy stuff you know off of the roadway. But with the season with no frost in the ground and the wet fall, it, it, it's almost impossible to keep it totally clean. Uh, I, I guess Norm, I got to ask one question, and you guys can maybe I'm off in left field playing right. I didn't think we were allowing occupancy permits in phase three until phase two was accepted by the town. We were doing it in a phased approval, so uh, am I wrong in that? I believe you're wrong. Okay. All right. Are you sure about that? Why do I have the same feeling as he does? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, all, all I will say is uh, we can have Dave go back and take a look at the conditions of approval. Yes, but however, th this issue seems to keep coming around and around and around. It's my recollection that you were in the office and we looked through the decision itself. We didn't find any such reference mm -hmm. previously. That's my recollection of it. Yet the issue seems to come around and around and around, so I, I don't know. Yeah. I, I thought, Dave, that they were allowed to build houses in the next phase. Um, they could build them all they want and sell them. They just couldn't get occupancy permits until the until the previous phase was approved. I, I'm not saying stop building. Don't get me wrong. They, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying they couldn't occupy them until the next phase was approved. But I, I pretty much can tell you that didn't happen in phase two because we hadn't accepted it and we were walking around to people living in houses. <laughs> the, the, the only reference to holding back on occupancy permits that I recall is on Bear Hill too. Okay, good enough. Um, and that has to do with the connection out to Brentwood Drive. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'll move on. Okay. Actually, Mr. Chair, I, I think I on this one, uh, previously I recall that I circulated the decision to the board so that the board could see it when this question came up previously. I'm going to forward the decision again. So if folks want to have a look at it, it's there. If there's a need for further discussion on a particular term or condition, mm -hmm. then this is a running item on the agenda. It's an open subdivision that it needs to be revisited, then it can't be. If that's yeah, Dave, the, 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 Dave and Norm, the, the reason why I'm struggling with this is because some of these subdivisions have taken four and five years to build, and my memory's not that good. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so that's the only reason I apologize if I'm interfering with the board time timeline but I just the subdivisions are taking so long to build that uh, I, I can't remember everything on it for the decisions right no I don't think anybody can mm. uh, that back to the road surface and the, and the dirt on the road surface uh, I talked to Peter Crane from Concom about this uh, he says you know unless unless he starts getting run off into the wetlands he has no issue with it uh, and I also talked with uh, Kyle Hulkren and uh, he said, you know, it's not really a big issue, it's just something that he is noting, you know, that they need to keep an eye on. But he, you know, he did not say that he really thought that, you know, okay, they should get that thing clean tomorrow. That, that's not his feeling. Um, Norm, is, you can tell me that this is outrageous, but is there any reason we couldn't ask uh, Blair Builders or Tom Larson when they intend to do phase five, which is, I think that's the connection of the two roads. You know, I, I'm sure they've got a timeline of some sort. I just, I was curious about it. Well, we can ask. Is it is, next spring, next fall, is, 2025? Isn't that you know, connection actually phase four? I thought it was phase five and phase four was that cul-de-sac that's sitting behind the subdivisions, but I could be wrong. Uh, I, I could. I like to think you might. Was, I think it is phase four. Yeah. I got funny okay. feeling it was phase four. The, 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 other thing, the other thing I would say there is that I believe he does not have, if he has any, only a couple of lots left to sell in phase three. Mm -hmm. So my okay. guess is that 
I, I, I would take a guess that probably first thing in the spring, he's already <coughs> stepping up phase four. Or did he have a did he have a problem getting? I thought there was some uh, issue that he needed some uh, permit or something like that that he was having a hard time getting for what it was on, on phase four. I don't recall the, the crossing of the is a crossing or a culvert or something like that. It could yeah. be. It could be. I believe the crossing is fully permanent now. It is. Okay, great. I could be wrong because, yeah. like Tim, my memory is not always great. Okay. Uh, is, but I will say, you, if, if I may answer the question that Tim asked, mm -hmm. phase four is the connection of phase two and three. Phase okay. five is a five A and a five B, each of which is a cul-de-sac off yeah. the road, the main road. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Peter. I just—it's it, it, not something that I'm looking to hold plea to. I mean, it, I just was curious. Or I shouldn't say plea, Tom or Blair Builders. Just get an idea, just for the town's perspective, of when we're going to connect those. We can ask. Okay. That's all I want to do. Yeah. And if he doesn't answer, that's fine. We, we just put an email out there. It's not an official legal letter or anything. Anything else on Bryce Lemon? Okay, next we have. Uh, 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 Before you go on, to, uh, yep. Kevin, um, on, the, on the phase two. If I read this correctly, as noted previously, there are several raised joints where the sidewalk pavement meets the residential driveways. Yeah. Raised joints must be addressed. Mm -hmm. um, my memory was from the site visit on the previous one that, that they this has come up before, and I just want to call it out. Um, the apron from the driveway that or the piece that goes from the actual traveled way to the limit of the property that's our, that's turned over to the town um, and those joints should be flush it's my understanding that the developer every so often um, holds off because the buyer doesn't always pay for top coat on their driveway but on the aprons I, I think they should meet the walk mm -hmm. I just wanted to call that out okay do you have any do you understand what I'm saying yes and uh, all right uh, you know, I, I guess at, at this point, the only thing is, again, that, that amounts to some paving work, which really cannot be done at this time of the year. So. No, it can't be done, but... Um, I, I like what Joe's saying, Norm, is that we should put this on a punch list for Clee, because you know he's coming to town meeting to get phase two accepted in May. Yeah. The thing is, until this is addressed, this will remain a bullet in Carl Hulkren's uh, inspections. Okay. Forever. I, I do have one question, Norman, and I apologize. It just came to my mind. Joe, do you get these reports from Quinn? Do you get copied on these? I do. They're really good about making sure we see everything. Okay, great. Thank you. I just want to make sure. So I, I want to make sure all the I's were dotted and T's were crossed between the town departments. So great. I'm glad you see these. So you'll, this will be on your radar, too, when these reports come in. Great. Thanks. Okay, Bristol Estates next. Okay, now is this is when I ask my question? <laughs> yep. Um, in Bristol Estates, are all of the uh, water, sewer, any electric, um, hell, even propane lines, if they're going to use propane, are those all at code depths? Um, I had heard, again, this is all hearsay, that some of those lines were not at code depth. And that is completely unacceptable to me, but again, it's hearsay. So that's why I wanted to ask Joe if, if there's been any inspection reports or does he have any knowledge of things not at code depth? Um, so can I answer directly to the chair? Yes, yes, please. Um, so we, we being DPW, were contacted by uh, the folks building the subdivisions engineer, I think it's Hannigan. Um, they went to, they had to modify the design, the previously approved design for water and sewer. 
because of the culverts crossing the wetland. It's my understanding that changes in environmental regulations made the crossing much more complicated and resulted in less than um, ideal coverage for the sanitary sewer and the water crossing both the culverts and in the subdivision entire. Um, it's not so much a capacity question that was concerned about having adequate cover over the water and sewer and truly what drove the entire design was where the sewer crossed that culvert and ties into the existing sewer next to the pump station. Um, the majority of the design looked to me to be adequate. Um, I did push back initially and asked for profiles and, and the engineer did provide profiles. Um, to, Ms., uh, to Carl Hulkern's credit, uh, there was one cul-de-sac where there wasn't adequate cover and he caught it and has since given that back to the designer or, and the, the owner of the subdivision. I, I haven't seen the final outcome of that piece yet, but the majority of the design did appear to be adequate. Um, Public Works can't comment on depth of propane. That would all be on private property. Okay. I hope that answers your question. Yeah, Joe, I, I just was worried because typically, and again, I'm not a I'm not a mechanical, but I remembered 18, 24 inches are typical depths for water and sewer lines, somewhere in that range. Well, here, truth be told, um, uh, Mr. Narwhal, through the chair, we prefer to have at least four feet of cover. Oh, God, okay. Um, because frost can get quite deep here. Okay. Luckily, the water's moving most often, and, and on average, wastewater lines are warmer than, you know, um, yep. sewer. So they, they're less likely to freeze, but we, we want about four feet of cover. Okay. Um, there's other issues associated with that, and some of it's loading. So it's not just, um, you know, chance of freezing. You have, if you get out from under, if you're below four feet, you, there's loading concerns. And what I mean by loading is you, we want to see at least the, the roadway bed has to be an H20 standard, basically how much truck traffic or car traffic can drive over those roads. So if you don't have that four feet of cover, you don't have structural integrity to hold up the pipeline mm -hmm. and you run the risk of deflection. I, I, I guess, you know, as long as you're, as long as you're okay with the design, I just, I, because it was PE stamped by Hannigan, I just wanted to make sure that it was it was code based and code following, and you know we, we don't have issues like we did in um, Bear Hill with the road collapsing because of maybe some sub base that wasn't done correctly. So hopefully, that's the reason I want to bring it up. If they build it according to plan, I think we'll be okay. Did they push the limits of of uh, you know the design, you know intended design? Yes, yes they did. Okay. But um, as long as it's built according to plan, I think we'll be all right. So I guess I asked a question, Norm. Who who does those inspections when they lay the pipe in there? Is that is that Carl coming out to bless that, and then having one of Joe or Joe's guys come out and make sure everything's correct, or is it just saying the drawings? We we built this to what the drawing says, which I have no faith in that. But that's my opinion. Uh, I, I, I know Carl does, you know, he does come out and, and do some inspections at, at the times when they're putting that in. However, he isn't there certainly for the entire process. Yeah. And, and I don't think uh, Joe Buckley, I don't think he has the staff at this point to uh, have anyone out there. I know, and, and, and Dick, this is where you can jump on and start, Marilyn can kick me too. I just don't have the faith in people following drawings in this town like they should so that's I really don't want to see Joe get into another four years down the road and you got pipes breaking yeah. I do feel maybe that uh, if we could get Kyle to come in more frequent to keep, yes, a, to keep an eye on it and to help out DPW the same time as he's helping us out yeah because if Carl's got a question he can always call Joe's office yeah and and, and have somebody come over and, and and Joe, you have the right to tell the developer to hold off until you get there, or is that the building inspector that has that right? Um, I imagine the building inspector could stop them from working, but it's technically private property until the road is turned over. Okay. But here's the other thing, and so some tests that we do require that 
uh, have to be pr proposed or prepared before we accept the sewer. You have to do a mandrel test, which yep. basically you you drag um, a device through the line to make sure that there's nothing deflected so that it's actually a round pipe of the appropriate size. Oh, that's the fiber, um, optic, the fiber optic line you sent through it? No, it's, it's actually a, a, a mechanical mandrel. Oh, okay. it's, a, it, it's like a bell that goes through the line to make sure that there's no deflection. Um, they also do what's called an air test or a pressure test to make sure yep. that the line holds air for a certain amount of time, and that checks for leaks. Um, they are responsible for prov providing as-built, so record drawings. So we'd have records of all the depths of pipe installed through that process. But the clo this particular design, I don't think it would work if you didn't build it the way it's drawn. Okay. And they'd end up coming back. Somebody would have trouble. So there's that also. Joe, let me just ask you one last question. I have never on the board in my years seen any of those test reports, and maybe I'm just not remembering, come through the planning board. Is that something that would be in our files, or would that all get sent to you from I the have, builders? I believe the ones for the sewers go to Carl's office. I think the ones for drinking water definitely go to us. I mean, the wa um, potable water, we have obviously pressure tests and uh, bacteria tests. Those are big concerns for us. Yep. Um, those are in-house, and we have records of those. Okay. Because that could make all kinds of people sick. So. Yeah. All right, good enough. I just... I don't remember it, and maybe Norm or Dick or Marilyn or Kevin. I just I don't remember seeing those in any report that I had looked at that come through from Carl. So no, I've never seen them. No, I, I don't think we routinely get them. Okay, good enough. Yeah, the, the, Thanks, only, sir. the only ones that I I know are of the the paving and like the gravel base from Yankee Engineering. Oh yeah, the asphalt test. We always get those. Yeah, we get those, but uh, for, for the others, uh, no. Uh, I have talked to, if you don't through the chair, Norm, I, I did talk to Carl about updating our requirements for sewers like this, and we're probably going to do some CCTV inspection, but we haven't, um, it hasn't been formally drafted yet. Okay. And uh, along those same lines, as I've said before, um, I have a really good rapport with um, the engineer, mm -hmm. uh, Carl, so uh, we go back and forth quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that, you know, I, I think that's, that's the, the most important thing. Mm -hmm. Is that uh, there? There is and appears there's uh, good communication between uh, Hannigan, uh, what, what, one of their engineers is an Anderson, I think, uh, and and Carl and, and you, Joe, and uh, I, that that to me is probably the most important thing. The the only other thing that uh, I'm just looking at this report, and, and I appreciate Carl putting this thing under that first bullet. It should be noted that any work done as a part of the plan that the board hasn't approved is done at the developer's risk. And I'm just wondering at what point we are going to be having what we need to give a final approval. And I don't know, Dave, maybe maybe you can give some shed some light on that or Yeah, I could put this as a follow up item uh, with uh, Quinn and the developer and whoever else to get the plan out there for some type of, of a look. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I, this plan has not been distributed as far as I'm aware. Yeah. You know, it, it would seem to me that we, we need a sign off from Carl. I think we need a sign off from Joe before, you, you know, we, we can approve uh, whatever revisions have been made. Uh, and legitimately this should all came before us before they got started. I'm so tired of this. <laughs> I, I guess, I, Norm, I've got the other question, and since we got Joe on, I'll ask. Those retaining walls, the key component that doesn't ever seem to happen is the engineer that did the design, being the, the structural engineer, is supposed to, uh, I'll use the word bless, be there when it's being put together, make sure everything's going correctly, and, and basically signs off on the, quote, as-built drawings. Um, has, has there been communication with you about that and Tom Larson and, and Quinn? I just, I don't want to end up with the bridge that we have over in Bear Hill, is what I'm getting at. I just want to make sure this is done correctly, it's built correctly, there's no issues with construction or retaining walls or drainage from retaining walls or a road that's going between the retaining walls. So, 
That's my question. Um, through the chair, unfortunately, I, I, I just know that the, the owner is responsible for hiring a structural engineer, okay. uh, an independent structural engineer to review the design, uh, re review both the design and installation. Um, and that person's going to provide documentation um, to Quinn. Uh, it didn't come to DPW. I mean, at least I haven't seen it. Let me ask this, Joe. Do you want to see it? Yeah, of course. All right. Well, that's that's my point then, Norm, is that I think because this is, again, this is not something that's typical in Rutland, that we should make sure our director knows what's going on. Because the last time when the bridge got built, it was, I'm not saying it was transparent. There's the word I'm looking for. Hmm. So I really want this to be transparent with Director Buckley so that he's got all the documentation that we have. Um, and again, I, I apologize, Joe, you're a PE, so you know more than me. <laughs> but if, if something doesn't look right, I, I'm, I'd be more than happy that if you sent something to the board that we can look into it or ask questions through Carl or through Tom Larson. So that's my only concern, because ultimately you're going to have to maintain this. <laughs> Yes. Okay, you know, go, going back to the Quinn's uh, December 27th report, uh, below the last of the bullets, there, there is a reminder to the developer that all retaining walls and actual color public construction must continue to be observed and certified by a structural engineer uh, after construction as being built per design, blah, blah, blah. Um, obviously, we have not gotten any reports from That's what I'm going to ask for, engineer. I'd like to see a daily or weekly or monthly or something that report from that engineer telling me what's going on, what he's looked at, and where they're at. Because it's never happened in the past, and then after the fact, we said, oh, it was built correctly. Well, how do we know that? During construction, we don't even know if anybody was there. <laughs> so so you know, I, I guess... The reports are limited to what Kyle gives us on the rest of the subdivision mm -hmm. from that yeah. engineer. But yeah, but Carl's not the, he, Carl's not a structural engineer. No, and he's not responsible yeah. for that retaining wall. So I guess what I'm asking: Can the board um, maybe request through Blair or Tom Larson a uh, weekly, monthly? I don't know. I'll leave it up to the board what they want to do. Report on how that retaining wall is being put in from the structural engineer who's supposed to be observing it going in and being built. Is that too much? You guys can tell me if I'm off in left field playing right. At this time of year, I would say monthly would be fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Monthly would be fine, or or at you know at at, at every substantial stage of construction. Something. Like yeah, that. like when they're when they're pouring the concrete for the for the supports with the retaining wall. Mm -hmm. I would presume that somebody should be out there to make sure the pour is correct and you know the. Uh, They've got the correct amount of um, rebar and all that stuff before that support gets poured, mm -hmm. since it's part of the retaining wall. But again, it's I'm not a structural engineer. I'm just half half baked from my experience, and that's it. So I just want to make sure we had something that could go into our files that down the road, if Director Buckley or anybody else that's in that department had questions, we got documentation to go back on. Well, I think it's gone so far right now. If we don't get anything within the next week or two, we ought to shut the project down. Let's put it that way. <laughs> because to me, for crying out loud, you don't want, like you said, you don't want to last thing find out, oh, my God, we've got to dig the whole thing back up again. Well, what happened, Dick, is, is what happened on phase one in Bryce Lemon, that, uh, that retaining wall. It was built correctly. Uh, my engineer sent a letter to the uh, board saying it was built correctly. Well, we have no reports yeah. of when it was when it was in construction, when how it was being built. <laughs> so, I, I just I would like some. I like. I'm a documentation person. And I just like to see some. I, I don't see why we can't require that. Okay. Thanks. So we will let Mr. Blair and Mr. Larson know that uh, we, we expect within the next two weeks a report from the structural engineer on his 
entire list of observations since the beginning of construction on the culverts. Thank you. Yes, I agree. Can I make a comment to the chair? Yes. Um, two quick things, and Carl did a great job here listing it. As previously noted, noted, noted a certification from a Massachusetts registered structural engineer must be provided stating that the arch culvert crossing is station 35 plus zero zero meet mass DOT specification. Mm -hmm. um, so please make sure it's a Massachusetts um, PE, structural PE, not New Hampshire or New York. <laughs> oh, come on. How about Arkansas? <laughs> No, while you bring that up, there's been a lot of arguments on the roads in, in the town meeting mass DOT, or this call for meeting mass DOT, as opposed to, is it Asia or, I'm sorry, Acetoe? Ashtoe. Ashtoe. The structural engineer on the bridge on Bear Hill didn't follow mass DOT specs to build that. He followed Acetoe. And I'm struggling when I see this sentence by Carl because ASTO and MassDOT are completely different. They might be in some areas the same, but there are differences. There are differences, and a lot of the MassDOT specifications borrow from the ASTO stuff. So uh, okay. I, I'm i good with the MassDOT um, specification. Okay. okay, good enough. Thanks. The only other thing I would suggest, somebody should maybe look at the drawings and find out who stamped the what they're building. See if it's the same person. Hmm. Yeah, because the culprit should have a structural engineer, not a mechanical engineer, stamping it. Right. It should be somebody different. I don't. I don't think we have any details of those culverts. Do we? Yeah, that's, there's there's a problem, Norm. That's why I'm trying to get Dick not wound up in me either. We still don't have the final details of how that design was going to be done. <laughs> and I had to ask, I mean, thank God Pete, Peter with Crane was here. I questioned the four arch culverts, why putting so many in there when you got a little dinky uh, pipe, you know, taking the water, but it's uh, the flat, like a flash flood type of thing. To take the water, mm -hmm. but uh, maybe with that re request, Norm, for the reports, we could ask for the uh, detailed set of installation drawings for that uh, at that crossing, that culvert crossing. I don't see why not. Yeah, that that's my opinion, and I'd like uh, Director Buckley to get copied on that too. Heaven only knows what's going to happen in fifty years. Yeah. yeah. Thing is, I, I watched them for a little while while they were putting in some of those foundation blocks and all that kind of nice stuff. And to be perfectly honest with you, the way they were moving around there, I, I'm, I'm almost wondering if they weren't designing it as they went. <laughs> yeah. Knowing that, when we got those pictures two or three weeks ago and saw the blocks laying next to each other, that was sort of my impression. But again, I'm an electrical, not a mechanical, so yeah. I can't comment too heavily. Anyway. Okay, anything else on Brindle Estates? Well, next up is... Uh, Actually, this is for trail. Okay. Yeah, there was a request to get mm -hmm. information out there about the trail. So yeah. That correspondence was sent to the applicant, uh, the, the developer. And then there's a response. You got a reply there, I think, yeah. Reply, yep. Yeah regarding um, a plan to show the uh, location of the real trail. So that's been acknowledged. Uh, uh, right here. Yeah. And it's also an open item on the consulting engineer reports. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can you read that to me? I can't. I'm at a weird angle. Basically, the applicant is indicating a proposed location for the real trail. Yeah. Plan no. to show it. 
uh, someplace between the lots 28R and 27C, perhaps, um, with the goal that it connects to the Watch Music Greenways. At least that's in the works. Yes. Okay, good. I appreciate that. Okay, Bear Hill 2. Uh, yeah. Norm, I, I read through the bullets that, and again, I, I apologize, Joe, I'm asking you a lot of questions. <laughs> Is 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 Tom or anybody get in touch with you for these camera inspection reviews or got you files or you know have, have the you know the inserts are recommended for Cape's cast stations? Is any of that stuff ever getting communicated to you or is it just do we got to rough them up from the planning board's perspective? Oh, okay. I'll answer through the chair to Mr. Narwald. Um, I believe the um, the recommended uh, inserts for the catch basins is a conservation commission issue and not so much public works. Oh, okay. My apologies. Basically, what they're trying to do there is to control some of the silt coming off the site because they have a lot of fines that washed out, made a mess going down the road. Okay. Um, the camera inspections, they dropped three, D, three CDs, three um, com. Uh, DVDs with the information off in my office. We just okay. haven't had a chance to look at them yet. No, no, I, I just wanted to make sure, Joe, you had them. As long as you got them, I'm fine, because that was the question. We didn't know if you had them yet. We got them, but I may have to send them back, because odd enough, I can't find a computer with a DVD player. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're telling me at the antiquated Rutland uh, Computer Center, there's no DVD players? We can't I'll see what I can take up. <laughs> If you need one, I might have a USB I can loan you. Um, and I, I made a mistake um, to the chair. I, on the previous subdivision, um, when you asked for the information on, on the, the bridge uh, or culvert crossing, could, could we get a schedule? <laughs> a schedule, you mean a, a when they're going to be doing things? Yeah, because to Joe's point, Norm, um, in the in my old days, there would be like a you know Microsoft project or something like that of when they were going to bring the concrete guys in, when they were going to bring the blocks in, when they were going to bring in the uh, 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 gravel, when they were going to put in drainage. All that stuff would be laid out, as opposed to willy nilly, we just do it as we go. The, the, the only problem I see that is that, you know, you know, all of that is so weather related. Well, no, they're definitely going to lose some time. It's just, um, uh, to, to Mr. Narwhal's point, you know, concrete does require a certain uh, strength test and, and time. And when you place that, it, you have to, it's a certain amount of time before you move on to the next placement. I hope they didn't pour any concrete today. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and maybe, maybe we put that as a request for the uh, um, structural engineer since he's overseeing this he should probably have a schedule of how it's going in that would be my opinion well uh, you know we'll, we'll try it yeah because he, he signed off on the drawing so yeah. he's got to know how they're built and the time frame and mm -hmm. you know I'm used to like what's the word I'm looking for milestones or whole points, things like that for a schedule. Anyhow. Critical path, Mr. Narwhal. Critical path. Oh, God, Joe, I know that all too well. And I'm usually in the middle of being an electrical. I'm always critical path. Um, I think, um, before I forget uh, to the chair, I, I may reach out to Carl about the bridge. There's been enough here that I have genuine concerns. You still have concerns? Well, I'd like to see the drawings. I'd like to see the schedule. Yeah. Okay. I'm not going to hold up the project, but I'm going to ask appropriate questions. Yeah, please do. Yeah. 
Okay, anything else on the subdivisions? Yeah, I think on uh, Deer Hill too. Well, the, there's a question about the open space fund. Mm -hmm. So there was a request yep. made relative to the house contribution. That information was sent to the uh, developer. We're still waiting for a response on that. Okay. And then there was another report for uh, Bear Hill for January 7th. And then for Bear Hill, you have a subdivision control agreement, a tri party. Is that something we need to sign, David? I yeah. guess. The, um, the I'm confused because, oh, this is Bear Hill too. I apologize. I keep thinking Bear Hill. I'm like that sucker better have been signed years ago. Mm -hmm. This is Bear Hill too. Thing. We've had this for a little while. Right. We've had this for a little while, right? We didn't just get this. No, we've had it for. I'm not, I'm not even sure how long we've had this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We wanted to take a quick look at it to see how it matches up against other, mm -hmm. so other such uh, agreements. Yeah. Have you had any chance to look at that? Yeah, so let me just get my notes here. Uh, uh, in general, it, it matches up to the other agreements in the big, the big picture, this is boilerplate language here. Mm -hmm. Where it's not the same is on a particular. So this is referring to two plans. One was the original subdivision plan. Then there was apparently some a &R plan that was done in 2015, which further modified the lots to show on the original subdivision yeah. plan. So that, that, allowed, that allowed the lots along Brittnell and Palm Augusta to be built. Yeah, and it also added another lot in Fair Hill itself. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so there's two plans being referenced. There's another lot created. I don't know the full history of this, whether the board's aware of that or not. The only thing I, I wanted to make sure about this, Dave, and since uh, hopefully Joe's still here, is this agreement has to have someone in here about a private sewer system because those lots on Britnell and Palm Augusta are part of a private sewer system. They're not owned by the town. So somewhere in here, and again, maybe I'm not, I'm not an attorney, but I believe those should be covered in this subdivision document indicating that uh, those are, that's a private sewer system on whatever um, the modified lots that we did for the a &Rs. Is that, am I wrong? No, you're right. You're right on. I, I missed that tail end of that. Which subdivision is this? Um, this is Bear Hill 2, Joe. The, uh, the, the, um, those lots out front that run up Rittenau are part of the Bear Hill 2 subdivision. And they have private sewers running to them. Um, as far as I know, they're not town owned. They were they were put in as private sewers. And I just wanted to make sure somewhere in this document that those lots were recorded as private sewers. So if there's any, basically what I'm trying to do is if you got to go and repair that, the individual landowner's paying for it. The town's not paying for it. So the so this agreement that you're reviewing. If I can answer you directly, is is for houses that have been there for several years. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You are uh, correct. Uh, my memory may really be failing me, but Tim, I think the houses you're talking about were not a part of Bear Hill. They were originally, but didn't he break them off to become A and R's? But yeah, I, I don't think they were ever a part of the Bear Hill subdivision. Those were all A&Rs. The, 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 what, 
one, two, three, four houses on Brickell Drive. They've all got E1 pumps pumping all the way up the hill. I think the first plans that we got of this, those the houses were actually up on Bear Hill and their back lots went down to Pomagusset. And then Cleve came back in in, I think, 2015 and, and A&R'd those lots to put the houses on Pomagusset and Brittnell, and then that little road that goes up on Bear Hill Drive. So I think originally they were part of the Bear Hill subdivision, but they got changed. Somebody can tell me if I'm wrong. I don't, my memory doesn't go six years ago. Mm. I think, I think you're right in all honesty. No, I'm way back. Do you have the plan that accompanies this agreement? Uh, yeah, the plan exists as a paper copy in the board's packet that, are, uh, that, uh, that are for the members who are here tonight. Um, I believe it was sent out to the rest of the board. If not, I have the paper copies right here. I've only got, yeah, the, all I've got, Dave, is I've got Zotley's and uh, I got Zotley's and Zotley's. I got two copies of Zotley's in my packet. Is that sent out separately? Dave, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Did you send it to me? I don't believe so. I was, this was a board correspondence. This wasn't. Let me see if I can find it. Hey, look. I just, you may not have it. Um, nope. to hold this until the next meeting I'm sure you can do that and we can get the rest of this information out to you and if there's any other questions we can try to understand what those are between now and when you get this information can we do that Norm just yeah table this and, and because well, I, I really want to pull out the plans from Bear Hill too and, and make sure this legal document we just don't sign without knowing all of the previous because Klee came in and did a bunch of changes if I remember right where this was all one going to be one subdivision, and then because he wanted to build those lots on Pomagusta and Brittnell, he A and R'd them and took them out of the subdivision, and then he also added that little stretch up the old Bear Hill Road that used to go up to Mr. Helly's place. Um, he put houses up there, so I right. I just so, like to have all the drawings out in front of us for the next meeting, all of the revisions and everything, so we are making sure that we're going to sign a document that's correct. The thing is, if he took those houses out of the Bear Hill subdivision, then we can't put any language in the Bear Hill 2 subdivision control agreement about those. Oh, I agree with you. I agree with you, Norm. If those are true A&R lots, mm -hmm. that I, I'm hoping in their deeds, <laughs> it says that those are private septic systems, but that's not our, That's mm -hmm. I, I don't think that's our control. Mm -hmm. um, that's, I guess, the assessors and... I, I don't know whose control it is. Yeah. I just, I, I, I'm a stickler, and I know Joe's, I've talked to him about this before. On his watch, there'll be no more private sewer systems going in this town if he has anything to say about it. Yeah. <laughs> no, to me, to me, those, those are just plain scary. <clears throat> yeah. So let's let's but, find out for sure. All I want to do is just make sure we dot the I's and cross the T's, and, and if, it, if it's not in there and they were pulled out, then great, let's go with this document. But I just want to make sure, and I don't, I don't have the confidence because that was six years ago, almost seven now. Yeah, at least. Okay, well, we'll pull the plans and look at them. Great, thanks. <laughs> okay, so we're going to hold the subdivision, the signing of the subdivision control agreement, to our next meeting. And, 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 oh, uh, I'm just, maybe I'm really getting picky here, uh, but there's the subdivision control agreement, which you, you all have that, right? 
several pages. But then following that last page, there's a release of covenant. No, 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 no. We're not going to release the covenant, are we? Well, yeah. When, the, when, they, when you sign the subdivision control agreement, that does normally release the covenant. Because the thing is, the covenant says they won't build a house until basically construction is complete. Okay, by putting up the bond for the construction, they, they can start, they can build houses, you know, and, and sell them uh, without. But is that road is that road complete, Norm? No. Then we don't want to release the covenant, do we? We always do. Okay. Because they're putting up I a thought shirt. we held on to it till yeah. the road was completed, no, no, but maybe I'm no. They, they're putting remember. they're putting up a guarantee that they will complete the road. Okay. That, that's what the subdivision control agreement is. But on the release of covenant, there is no name on it for what subdivision. That's that was that's why I brought it up. Uh, it, it says release of covenant and doesn't say for what uh, other than the deed reference. Yeah. Okay. Seems to me there should be a a subdivision name on it or something. Yeah. 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 But Norm, is that also releasing the bond? No. Because I see that, um, which the agreement is subject to the sum of one hundred and forty thousand yeah. dollars. What is that one hundred forty thousand okay. dollars? Okay, the the last sentence. This yep. release of covenant is contingent upon the execution, delivery, and recording of a tri-party agreement, which is okay. the subdivision control agreement. Okay, so when when we sign this off. We can release this covenant and they can get their hundred and forty thousand dollars back, which they put up for the covenant. Okay. No. They they don't get that hundred and forty thousand dollars back. Which agreement? I thought that's what this Let me read this again. They they, they get that money back when we are satisfied that the subdivision has been completed uh, as required and it is accepted by the town. Then yeah, we, we usually they hold on to something a year after just to make sure there's no failures yeah, or anything. Yeah, 10%. 10%. 10%, yeah, okay. Yeah, All right. Yeah. I apologize. I, when I read this, it sounded like we were allowing them to get their 140000 That's where I was struggling with this. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Not a chance. Because it said the release of the covenant is contingent upon execution, delivery, and reporting of the tripartite agreement. And which it says which agreement is a subdivision control in the sum of one hundred forty thousand dollars. So that's why I was struggling. It says the release, so an execution by recording it. That's why again I'm not an attorney, but it just seemed like hold it, are we letting them take the money back? No. When no. they record this? No. Okay. That hundred and forty thousand is what we were talking about, the bonding for the road, correct? Yep. Okay, good enough. Thanks. A anyway, does everybody agree that there should be a little bit more language on that release of covenant saying what it's all about? No, no, agree to yeah. the road on it. Okay, Dave, you got that? Yeah. What I mean, I, I don't know, it just, you know, it, it just sounds to me like, you know, hey, this, yeah, it could be anything. <laughs> yeah, you could take this and run it over to who knows what. <laughs> yeah. So. Slip it under the door. Okay. Yeah. Anything else on the subdivisions? I had some technical difficulties. I missed um, some of the last that conversation. I couldn't find the drawing. Has that issue been continued? On? Um, yes. Bear Hill? Thank you. Yes. Yeah, we're going to continue it right norm until our next meeting when we have the drawings laid out and we can look at everything. Yeah. Actually, uh, I'm going to send out this information well in advance of that. I'll send it out yeah. electronically and have a paper backup. Um, should there be any questions in the meantime, if you could get those questions circulated back, that would be helpful. Um, yeah, I've got to, Dave, i got to come up see. because I don't, I don't know if we've got all the electric, I don't know if uh, they gave us all the electronic PDFs of all those drawings, so. Well, I think <laughs> there's dark, there are plans referenced in the subdivision control agreement that are the applicable plans to this mm -hmm. agreement. Those plans will be submitted to the board. Those mm -hmm. are the plans specifically referenced here. 
this, this is one plan, lots 1B to 5 revision, and lot 7 to 14. These are two separate plans. These are the plans on record reflecting the board's actions. Those plans will be submitted to the board so that the board can now look at the agreement, look at the plans that go with the agreement. And if the board wants any of this information here, the certificate of approval has conditions relative to what kind of source system could be installed or not, and other such conditions, and also the covenant. So this is really the conditions that apply to this agreement. So if that information can be submitted well in advance of the meeting, to give the board a fair chance to take a look at it, um, yeah, and then be prepared for, to ask questions or have follow-up comments at the next meeting, just in the interest of time, I would think. I just, I just want to take a look at the plans and see those lots that were talked about there. If those are just lots on the U-shaped Arrowhead Way, and those other lots that were built were taken out of the subdivision, and. Um, Put into a A and R, um, and they're not part of the subdivision. So that's all. I just want to take a look at those. I'll probably won't be this week. It'll be next week. I might stop up, Dave. I'll give you a call and just stop up and take a look at those drawings. Dave, are you going to send those out? Because I was unable to locate them. Yeah, if you like that information as well, I can do that. Thank you, especially because I, um, it's it's the policy since I've been there. We don't want any more private sewer systems. I mean, so on-site subsurface disposal is fine, but sewers that are controlled by homeowners agreements or stuff like that, I'd rather not have that. I can certainly understand that. <coughs> Anything else on the subdivisions at all? Anywhere. No, hearing nothing, we'll, we'll move on to open space and recreation plan. And actually, Joe, uh, I thank you for joining our meeting. I think, does anybody have any more questions for Joe? No, no. Thank you for joining us. Yes, yes. yes, thank you. Yes, you're, you're welcome to stay, but. Uh, um, I just want to say thanks for having me in, and uh, everybody try and stay healthy. Uh, yeah, yeah. Try. You too. <laughs> okay. Uh, open space and recreation plan. Something that was brought up at couple of meetings ago, I believe, and yeah. this was in the uh, open space plan of 2017. And it was what the planning board represents. So. And uh, I just want everybody to be aware of it. Well, do you want to take a few minutes and just go through anything that is listed as planning board? Well, Central Mass Lost Bill of Scenic Byway to enhance natural, historic, and recreation resource along 122A. Mm -hmm. Now they're doing, so, they're doing something about kiosks and that sort of thing out there? The kiosk has been down here some way, way back. It was prior to Helen Viner and Addison Redfield and myself were on the board at, at that time. And um, so it's, it's been many years. Mm -hmm. And it's Is been, that from the Dick that uh, maybe we should um, get in touch with Sheila as part of the 300 that they might want to get involved with that? Uh, well, the only thing is down here that Dave has been working on, and I'm hoping Dave is going to punch in here and say a few things. And um, okay. But right at the moment, it was set up between OCAM, uh, excuse me, uh, <laughs> Paxton all the way out to Petersham. They were going to extend it on, and I don't know if they ever did to Orange. But uh, OCAM had such a problem with the select board. They would not allow them to put it in certain areas. There are beautiful areas near how um, vegetables stand down there. It was an excellent spot, but 
the people made uh, made some comments and got everybody nervous, and that was it. But anyways, it, it's it, yeah. What is what does the fund say? D L T A mean? What does that mean? Is that like a uh, yeah. uh, account or a uh, uh, fund that we're getting from the state to do that? Yeah, well, Central Mass Regional Planning, yeah. and we can ask Dave because uh, I am. Yeah. Yeah, if you want me to, to provide an update on this, yep. so if the, as the board recalls, uh, about last March or so, the board, um, a staff brought to the board a suggested plan to research and look at prior recommendations made in reports that pertain to the scenic byway and to see if, if the, if the, um, to see if the recommendations were implemented. And if so, to to take a look to see if there's a plan to further look at, the, at those recommendations and come up with an implementation strategy and just, you know, touch base on this issue. So the board agreed in policy that that was something that, were, that should be pursued. So staff working with the Regional Planning Commission was awarded a district local technical assistance DLTA grant uh, for, oh, right. for an amount of about eight to $10,000 uh, for this very project. So I will be providing a more a thorough, a thorough um, brief on this in time. The project has been closed out for this year. The Regional Planning Commission is working on a report. Once they have that report, I'll distribute it to the Planning Board. We can have a greater discussion on this. Um, one thing that Dick indicated was that there's a kiosk. The part of this project was to update the kiosk. And as the board also recalls, over the last couple of months, Staff brought this to the board, brought the kiosk and the contents to the board to see if the board was yep. interested in offering recommendations to revise the content on that kiosk board. The board provided several recommendations. Those were referred back to the Regional Planning Commission for updates to the kiosk. So we're expecting as a deliverable, a large size poster that can be inserted into the kiosk. And if we have the file, we'll keep our options open to use it in other ways. We would also intend to put this on the town's website in the various locations. And we have been working with the, we are aware of the 300th anniversary and the importance of that. And several of the items that were listed on their brochure for the year have been brought to the kiosk, as well as links to the 300th anniversary committee and the town's website for more information. So that's a brief update on that. A further update will be provided in due course. Okay, great. Thanks, Dave. So as you can see, anyways, there has been a, a you know, planning board has been involved in a few of these things, and, and luckily enough, they have been proceeding slowly. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm hoping that uh, the majority of the stuff will be taken care of before the next open space we, and direct place. Are we going to do anything, Norm, with, there was one up there about the continue to apply and evolve the town's scenic road bylaws. And that's, mm -hmm. I know it's a low priority, but it does just say planning board. Is there any thought process of doing that down the road or, because um, I know we've had some, what's the word I'm looking for, some questions on how it's applied. Uh, I, I guess, well, you know, two comments. Obviously, you know, we had the proposal come in from the Historical Commission. Yeah. For several roads, which they never did follow up on. Uh, yep. I have no idea where they're going on that. Uh, I, I would kind of tend to think they may come back, uh, you, you know, at the May town meeting, uh, looking for some designation. <laughs> and, uh, you know, in, in, in that respect, certainly, uh, we would, you know, give them whatever assistance that we really feel we can uh, to forward that. Uh, as far as the bylaw itself, uh, and this is just kind of an aside, I guess, uh, the Ad Hoc Bylaw Committee uh, has spent a significant amount of time doing some rewording not really changing the, you know, the effect of the scenic road by law, but changing some of the wording to, to maybe make it more clear and, and, uh, and that sort of thing. And at least at this point, 
we are planning on bringing it's the first five chapters of our general bylaws to town meeting in May, and uh, the scenic road bylaw will be a part of that. Well, that that better go through our group. Isn't that a planning board requirement? I'm I'm sort of putting my stake in the ground right now. The, the, Shouldn't that go through Maryland's group and then through the planning board? No, it's a general uh, bylaw. It's a general bylaw. Yeah, it's not a zoning Ready? bylaw, so therefore that would not be the case. Mr. Chair, the uh, the scenic roads will not be is not part of chapters one through five. Oh, it isn't. I thought no, it was. it's in the it's in the chapter six. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> okay, I just I, I appreciate the clarification. I thought since we spent time on it that it was a uh, under a zoning mm -hmm. bylaw. Anyway, I don't, as I recall, we didn't change the effect of the scenic road bylaw. Really? No. In fact, we went out of our way to not change the impacts of it. Yeah. So, I could have sworn that was going to be one of the things. What's that? I thought that was going to be one of the things that we would be bringing. No, oh. that's public and private ways. That's chapter six. Oh, okay. Let's see. Next one I see for planning board says enhanced walkability of Rutland Center. Well, Already uh, done. <laughs> I guess they got that sidewalk that, thing. That's that plan that goes up Palm Augusta all the way to uh, what? Uh, um, how far does that go? That walkway goes all the way up to uh, uh, the two the two subdivisions that are across from each other. Yeah, something like that. I, I don't. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, east and west, and I forget the name yeah. of them. I apologize, but. That's a significant walkway increase. <laughs> well, yeah, but Dave? Uh, no, no. So what, I think this pertains more directly to the, to the center itself. Yeah. So recently the DPW director was successful in getting monies to do sidewalk improvements from the town center around where Heavy Evans is down towards the... Our, uh, down to the uh, the heights. heights yeah. mm -hmm. that's, that, that's the walkability of the Rutland Center per se yeah. in the center area, not further down mm -hmm. on 156, as far as I understand it. Yeah. Yeah. So that seems to be something that you can check off as mm -hmm. as being done, and that's not necessarily by the planning board, but by the DPW. Mm -hmm. just, just as a, and interesting, this is an aside, uh, talking with, with Joe Buckley, uh, there's the TIP project for Palm Desert Road that goes down to which, whichever it is, Marjorie mm -hmm. Lane, Brunel mm -hmm. Lane, or whatever. But it apparently, the Richards have. Yeah, but but apparently, uh, he just got a notice from the state mm -hmm. that they're interested in the rest, the rest of Palmadessa Road, and Maple Ave. Oh, really? And Route 68 again. <laughs> How many times oh, are they going to have to do so, that one before they get So, there? Norm, you're telling me the state guys are going to do the roads all the way to where it was finished? Because they did it from 68 down to a specific area on Palm Gusset already. Yeah, and, and you know, I, I don't know what extent that, that yeah. you're all talking. It's just that uh, apparently, uh, because, see, the, the, uh, the TIP project is federal money. Yeah. And now uh, this is the state coming in and saying, yeah, we want to do some stuff too. Yeah. Oh, maybe some of that COVID money that we need to repair some of the roads infrastructure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Peter. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Buckley did join us at a conservation commission meeting recently and explained that the Route 68 one is not as certain as the rest of Pomegranate Road. Okay. So they're mm -hmm. very sure they're going to do Pomegranate from the end of the tip all the way north. Mm -hmm. But the original plans were to do 68 also, but that has become under question with timing and money. Mm -hmm. And I haven't heard anything about Maple either way, but that was not part of our discussion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all I would say, Peter, is Paul McGusset, from 68 down to, and I don't know if it was Campbell Street or someplace, they already did the tearing up and replacing and all that stuff, but they stopped. So that part of Paul McGusset, if I'm not mistaken, has already been repaired three, four years ago, five years ago? It was some time ago, yes. Yeah. Hey, they can do it again. Yeah. State money. Oh, they want to do it. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. It's only my tax dollars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. <coughs> uh, 
Okay, uh, I see another planning board one there. I continue to update zoning, subdivision, and open space special permit regulations. Uh, yep. That one to seven years to do that. Oh, wait a minute. Time's up. Yeah. <laughs> that point. Okay. That, that, that might be a point for discussion on our next agenda item. Yeah, I was thinking that, Norm. Business meeting? Yeah. Let's see. That it? No, nope, there's one. Uh, page two is one. Research opportunities to apply conservation design techniques to preserve and connect open spaces in Rutland. Well, didn't we do that, Norm, by by putting in the lid into our subdivision bylaws, the lid? You know, we, yeah, we, yeah, somewhat. Mm -hmm. But you know, even just uh, requiring connection to the rail trail on Brinton Estates. States. Yep. I think we've done some work on that. We could so, actually take a know, partial check off on that. I can't. You know, it hasn't been ignored. Yeah. Well, I see one more on the next page. Con com combination of Conservation Commission Planning Board, DPW, and I'm assuming that's town administrator. Cooperate with state agencies. Yeah. Uh, hey, where's the ski trails? I want to know about those. Uh, sorry, but uh, they were taken down a few years ago. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, uh, cross country. They were taken down fifty something years ago. Cross country ski trails. That's the rail trail in the winter. Exactly. <laughs> okay. And the prison camp. But haven't we sort of done that by replacing the culverts and stuff like that? So haven't we sort of, you know, that that culvert in fifty six that's going to be replaced? Isn't that we're doing that? We're cooperating with the state to get that done. You talking about the dam? No, remember, and I can't remember if we did it or if it's got to be done. Didn't we replace the uh, the on fifty six the uh, culvert that goes that the rail trail goes through or under the road? Didn't that get replaced a while back because the road was closed and they were working on and put the tunnel uh, put the tunnel in? Yeah, to yeah, tunnel. put the tunnel in. Yeah, yeah. That was before this version of the OSRP. Yeah. Okay, I was trying to take credit for something that we'd already know. <laughs> okay, anything else on open space and recreation? And I, I, like I said once before, I did send a letter to the people that own the um, property next to Putnam Park and I never heard back mm -hmm. and I don't intend on trying again until springtime when I could physically walk up there and mm -hmm. even walk around. Yeah. Hopefully I'll physically be well to do it. So is there any conclusion to be drawn with what we just took a look at? Yeah. I think other than at least it seems on most of them there's been some progress or some movement. Some movement and I would like the planning board to stay abreast of it, please. Instead of uh, 2017 and almost five Ten years have lapsed, and mm -hmm. it's one of the first times we've ever looked at this. So I feel it's something that garner a little bit of uh, observing. <laughs> mm -hmm. And maybe uh, sight walks, too. In the uh, summertime. That doesn't hurt. No? But not tonight. Uh, no. <laughs> the only sight walk I want to see is the pellet stove. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Chair, if I may make a comment about what Mr. Williams just said, he made a very good point that, like many other plans, the 2017 Open Space and Recreation Plan was published, distributed, and then everybody threw it in a drawer and forgot about it. Yeah. There is, we are. The Conservation Commission, who's actually the superior committee today, is hoping that when the next edition is published that we can make the Open Space Committee a permanent committee standing by itself, not as part of CONCOM, but standing by itself to periodically review 
the update the status of everything with the various town bodies, the, the different officials and boards mm -hmm. to to help with that so that they don't be forgotten. And also this is a chapter of the master plan. Mm -hmm. And because of the good timing here, which we'll be getting to an update on the master plan phase one and phase two in a moment, but given the good timing here, this is going to be brought into the master plan itself as a chapter. So it's anticipated that the implementation of the master plan collectively is going to incorporate, encompass all the chapters. So there's another check mm -hmm. for implementation besides the possible recommendation to have the open space committee as a standing committee. So you can so try to work Dave, together. Right. Pardon me, one second, please. I'm sorry, so I apologize. So we can try to work together mm -hmm. and you know rate, uh, try to have a manageable process to implement in general all the things in the master plan. Working in the collective spirit like you're talking about, I think would be would be wise. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. Mm -hmm. What's that, Tim? Oh, I just, I was going to, Dave, what, I, what I'm taking away from this is we'll actually be able to, instead of have separate documents, this open space would be a, a section of the master plan that somebody could have one document and be able to go through and, and put check marks as completed and also review. I, I like that because in the past, Rutland seems to have documents all over the place. And if we had one central with the master plan with everything in it, I think that's a phenomenal idea. It, it, there, are, there are questions about the frequency of updates of each. The OSRP has a mandated frequency of update, and I don't know what the master plan requirements are anywhere if there are. I know that we haven't done it in 20 years, yeah. more or less. Uh, and, but the and, OSRP and can't, may be updated more frequently than the master plan, and th so that's going to if it's not planned for appropriately in terms of how we negotiate the different planning structures within the town, we're going to run into much the same problem we've had in the past. Yeah. Yes. The, the other thing is I, I, don't, I don't think the master plan is going to go into this kind of detail right. of something like this. That's, that's not... Well, the master plan is going to take the open space work and bring that in as a chapter in its yeah. entirety. Yeah, but but not in this deep this kind of detail. Yes, in that kind of detail. It's going to bring in. This is really? from the open space plan for 2017. Those are recommendations made in that. That is the chapter. Word for word. That all, that is part of the chapter. So however they formulate formulate their recommendations, mm -hmm. that's part of the chapter that comes into it. Okay, I wasn't thinking that that would be the case. Yeah, it's part of the. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the OSRP, I believe, is expected is hoped to be completed this year. And, and put through the state. The other piece of it is that we also have a state approval process we have to follow in the OSRP. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else on that one? Business meeting. Discussion by the board for topics for a business meeting. I say we set the date first. <laughs> I would rather not set a date until we have some idea what we're going to talk about. <laughs> I don't want to come in here and everybody just stand there looking at each other. Uh, I want some new language in our subdivision rules and regulations for anything new that comes through the door. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait a minute. It just happened. <laughs> no, yeah, we, I, we, we I need to update. I think the point is that we, we've got to make sure that, because we haven't looked at that subdivision regs in years, and there might be new regs from the state that we're just not applying for roads, for, uh, and again, I'm shooting from the hip, spacing, uh, construction requirements, things like that. We just, I, I think we need to get an update. And, and also, if there's any, to you, to the point we made earlier, if there's, any new lid recommendations or anything from the state for recommendations for green? Since Dave and you could tell me, are we a green? Are we a green town? Did we get that certification? Yes, we did. Yes, some time ago. Okay, so we should take an opportunity to try to 
put some of that into our sub. I, I don't know what that is. I, I, I guess I'd ask for some, either Dave or somebody to do some research and find out is there, is there other communities that are green communities that have added anything in their subdivision bylaws. But I think to Dick's point, we, I mean, I, I personally think it's going to be multiple business meetings, but that's my opinion to, to go through the subdivisions. I think we should pick a section for a meeting and say we're going to do section one, two, and three, and that's what we're going to focus on. I, I like what Marilyn did with the um, uh, the apartment, the accessory apartment. We attacked it section by section. It was a great a great way to do it, and then we agree upon everything and then move on. I, I, I'm thinking a little bit differently on this one. Uh, I guess I'm going to start out by, by j just saying that for us alone to look at our subdivision regulations and do a good job of updating them, oh. I, I think is... Uh, a too big a task, Norm? Not just too big a task, too, too complicated. Right. Yes. And, and just as with the uh, accessory dwell apartment dwelling, where did that start? By like going out and getting other ones and using them no, as a template. No, it didn't. No, it didn't. Oh, I thought, it, I thought that's how that got put together. Where did it start? CMRPC? Well, yeah, I mean, first it started with the community indicating a need for it, mm -hmm. then working with the Regional Planning Commission, staff yeah. working with the Regional Planning Commission, with the Planning Board mm -hmm. endorsing it as a policy yeah. to proceed. Yeah. And then it worked itself out, yes. Yeah, so. in, in, in other words, we got outside help yeah. to do it. Weren't we going to do yeah. that, Norm, before the pandemic? We were going to have the CMRPC because they had some, um, some uh, monies that they could help us out with reviewing our subdivision bylaws. Um, I remember that. I don't know if anybody else does, but I thought that they were going to help us out by going through and giving us recommendations. Maybe they already did, and I just don't remember it. Yeah, I, I don't recall anything from CMRPC. Yeah, right. me neither. I'm not saying there wasn't. I, I, I don't recall. Please refresh my memory. I can't remember the guy's name that used to work for him, but worked. Uh, on its own, a separate business that came in and did the zoning. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Scannell? Scannell. Yeah. Yeah, Bill Scannell. Uh, he was Bill, phenomenal. Uh, Bill Scannell, yeah. And to me, that's the uh, ideal person if you want somebody to try to help out. That, yeah. that would be. I don't think he's probably doing that anymore. He probably is not. No. But there well, again, uh, yeah. there are going to be other people like him. Yeah, okay. The, the, the bottom line on, on this whole thing, and that was just mentioning this to Dave earlier this week. Our administrative account is rather plush right now. Let's hire Carl to do this then. Well, <laughs> you know, and you know, I, I even brought that up. That, you know, maybe, maybe we could have Carl look at it. I don't know who's the person to have a look at it. Or, or person, agency, or whatever. What I am saying is I think it might be reasonable we can spend some money on it. Excellent. I like that, Norm. Rather than just having to sit down and, and hammer it, you know, amongst mm -hmm. ourselves. Well, I remember us talking about using Carl because he just doesn't work for Rutland. He works for multiple towns. Mm -hmm. And he has a lot of experience in subdivision bylaws, um, structural, you know, stuff like that. He, that's not his expertise, but in road construction and subdivision bylaws, he does have a, a fair amount of experience with other towns. So, you know, Charlton, Holden, things like that. So uh, it might be a good, it, it couldn't hurt if, if Dave would talk to um, Mr. Conte or, or Carl and see if that's something they'd like to take on as a consultant work. What, one thing I, I, if I hang around long enough, I want to make sure the open space that we have here will stay here and not lose it. Why, of all, this, all the surveys that we've ever taken in this town, what is one of the most things that pop up why the people moved into this town was the open space. 
Yeah. And we're losing. We're going to be losing it. Oh. And to me, for crying out loud, if we don't start somehow saving it. So you were actually talking about a second, uh, second conversation here, a second, a second topic. Yeah. Could be or be so part, part, uh, could be part of the subdivision rules and regulations. To me, for crying out loud, right now, it, it ticks me off. Uh, HOA or whatever it is down here, the Price Lemon, for a, a big chunk of property, they're never going to go over there. It should have been donated to the town, in my opinion, because it was so close to Putnam Park, it could have been an extension okay. of Putnam Park. But that type of thing. I mean, the town is going to come up with money to make re for recreation. No, any subdivision that's now should be some kind of a recreation or something. Yeah. for the town. I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm just saying I think we're talking at topics and that's a really good topic to the chairman. That might, Marilyn, you got a good point. That might be a topic for our business meeting and then the subdivision bylaws might be a good topic to send out and have somebody work on. Right. Well, the thing is I'm not saying that we don't need to do work on that. No, but no. We, we, it's a lot easier if we have a new, fresh basis to work from. Somebody that has the the new knowledge of the rules yeah. and regulations mm -hmm. that we're not totally up on. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Because I, I like to reduce the 500 foot if you have a pig farm down oh. to uh, 30 feet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I want to allow roosters and subdivisions. <laughs> I wanted to bring up for the business meeting is there's a, I think in our business meeting we should prioritize, come up with a list in our business meeting of what bylaws, zoning bylaws, we want to attack and in, in set up sort of like a two or three year plan of how we're going to do or which ones we're going to go after. And, and again, plans change, I get that, but at least we have something on paper on. You know, like we, we want to go after a signed bylaw this year. We, we want to update the uh, marijuana bylaw next year. I mean, just something like that. So, A, it gives Maryland an idea of where we're going, and B, it sort of gives us a plan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good idea. Noise bylaw first. <laughs> Especially for those out cows in time. we got to shut those things up. Man, they're loud. Well, I was referring to me also. Peter. Uh, Mr. Chair, there's been uh, the not this past time meeting, but the one before with the citizen petition uh, modified section what 11A, 10A, whatever uh, of zoning mm -hmm. created some inconsistencies and some problems in the bylaws in the zoning bylaw. In addition, mm -hmm. there are a number of references inside that zoning bylaw that don't make sense. They make reference to sections and articles that did not exist when they were written. So I would imagine through the bylaw subcommittee, but that's all got to be worked through and, and made consistent and correct throughout the zoning bylaw. So, yeah. Based upon and, and, to, to Peter's point, that's what I was thinking of. Excuse me. I'm, I'm coming not up sure. with a list of how we want to attack it. I'm not sure if you can see us in here or not. Maybe that's probably what the, what the issue is with the delay. So if that's the case, I apologize. Um, the issue with the 11A was something that we are aware of from the last time when that was made. That's in the, that's in the work plan that I have, things that I'll be bringing to the board. Whether the board wants to also be thinking of that, that's fine. But there are some things like that for technical corrections. Mm -hmm. There's also the leftover of the site special permit, uh, reducing the number of findings of fact. Mm -hmm. I think for this spring, some of the smaller bylaw changes would be coming from staff. Well, if the board is thinking of those as well, that's that's fine. But I was aware of that. And I knew you were part of the discussion. Mm -hmm. So, um, but if you want to bring it to the fold, that's fine too. Sorry, Tim. Go ahead. No, no, Dave, I mean, and I know I apologize, I'm harping on this, but that, that uh, major occupancy thing it, it has been stuck in my craw for a while. I, I really want to get that cleaned up, and if, if that's, you know, whatever time David can pull from some other towns of how they do it and, and get it cleaned up, I, I just, <sighs> there were a lot of loopholes in there that I didn't like once I really got into it and started reading. 
and I, I think we really got to get that cleaned up if we're going to give the building in, inspector any enforcement ability. That's my opinion. I mean, like I said, that one's been sticking in the craw for a while, and I just I'd like to get it cleaned up if we can. But again, it's up to the board. We can talk about it, come up with a list, and decide what we want to do. But I think that should be part of our business meeting: is come up with a plan of what bylaws, zoning bylaws, to attack in the next couple of years. So it sounds like we'll have a lot of business meetings. Yeah. <laughs> We're just going to shut down the planning board and have business meetings till September. <laughs> I think it's going to take that. But, Norm, I, I think we should, and again, you guys can tell if I'm wrong, I think we should plan for at least two in the next six months. Because it's been years since we've had one, and I think there's a lot of things being uh, zoning bylaws, uh, discussion on open space, um, uh, you know, even even clarifying some of our A&R bylaw to include the illusory frontage, because I know we've only we put a letter out about that, but we never updated the, uh, the zoning bylaw. So, you know, maybe we should do that. Um, you know, so that's why I think it'd be a good idea to sit down at a business meeting, maybe it's not a long one, and and basically, you know, we've got some topics now, but form a plan. Well, we, 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 can, we can do that. Uh, one big problem that I still am seeing is this stupid COVID thing. Yeah, I know. Uh, because, well, basically, there's no other place we can be. Outdoors. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but not tonight. Yeah, I was going to say, head right out there right now. Yeah, and we'll, 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 uh, we'll adjourn the I meeting to the outside. I can rent you out the upstairs of the old fire station at a very good price yeah. as treasure. <laughs> uh, and, and, you know, for example, what, I think one of the things we had thought of it sometime or other was, you know, doing them on our off Tuesdays. <laughs> Hong Kong meets our off Tuesdays, and this is the only place they can meet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? Right. So, I, I, I don't know. I, I guess. Is there a reason good, we can't good. meet in the Clee Blair uh, place over there? You know, the. Conference room? Yeah, the, the other conference That's Oh, the, the library down there. The, the other part The big one? Uh, yeah. It would have to be the big one. That's yeah, that's what I meant. The big one, time. not the little one. But the big one. Last I mean, because during the COVID times, Mike Sullivan. Had yeah, Mike. Yeah. Mike Sullivan uh, had if both. I mean, just a comment on the conference room. So that is booked through Kerry, yeah. um, and just from experience, we do have to keep in mind the COVID vaccine clinics because that sometimes does mm -hmm. make that room unavailable mm -hmm. for use. That's come up a couple times. Yeah. The good news is, according to the fire chief, they're going to only Monday for I don't know how long. Yeah. O only Monday clinics. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Uh, Dave. Now, what back. happens? What happens the day on uh, uh, Martin Luther King Day, for example, an upcoming Monday holiday? I don't know. Do you have any kind of anticipation on what? or how heavy our agendas are going to be for the next couple of months? Um, so yeah, we have the car wash to be resolved. I'm expecting that they're going to be able to address the issues that they have. So if that goes according to plan, that should be closed out at the next meeting. Unless there's some major deficiencies where they're not able to get it done. Then after that, there's going to be a marijuana retail store coming up uh, for hearings. Other than that, there's no new subdivisions that are in the wings. Uh, it's probably more the routine a and uh, existing subdivisions. So it, it's possible that the business meeting could be incorporated into the regular meetings just as a matter of course. Just have it on the agenda as a running item, business meeting. Yeah. If uh, time I'm allows. Just, you know, just wondering if, if we could even, and I don't know, maybe we cannot do this, but you know, set 
a time limit. Our regular planning board meeting is from 6.30 to 8.30 or 8 o'clock. And we make sure that unless it's impossible, you know, we fit the agenda items that will fit into that time and then after 8 o'clock or what from 8 to 9 or whatever, whatever you want. Uh, I like that, Norm. That's a great idea. A business meeting. Mm -hmm. Because we put business, we put discussion points on our agenda for the last couple of years, and it's nine o'clock at night, and all of us are like, we're dead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I like fact. your idea of literally scheduling the time. It's an idea. Oh, it's a great one. Try we it. should do that. Try See it. what happens. Okay. So. And not only that, does Tamika have to be here during that discussion of business, or not? I don't really think it. so. Then she can go home and be with the kids. Well, you know, it's... <laughs> Unless she wants to be away. <laughs> Somebody's got to take notes because it's an official planning board. It's an official Open planning meeting. board meeting. Uh, well, I don't know. How do you feel about it? <laughs> I don't think for me it would be any different than just doing a regular planning board meeting. Mm -hmm. You know. Oh, okay. Yeah. I would think that it is part of the planning board meeting. If the meeting is still open for the planning board, this is an agenda item, yeah. like any other agenda item, and it gives mm -hmm. the time it needs. Maybe yeah. some nights it's going to have to be shrunk for how much time it is, depending on how long the rest of the meeting is before it. Mm -hmm. If it's a short meeting ahead of it, and it's a longer period for it, if it's on there as a running item, it is technically part of the planning board meeting. Yeah. It's not a okay. separate meeting per se. No, you it is Adjourn one and start another one. So. But, it, but anyway. So, so I, I guess uh, the, the other thing is that, uh, and I'm going to kind of put the task on to Dave to at least try his best to arrange things. You know, a lot of things you, you can't, you know, you get deadlines when you have to do something. But trying to arrange things so that it appears anyway that we might have some time at each meeting. Yes? Sure, that, that's fine. We know, it's not, we know it's not going to work every time. Yeah. And, you know. The other thing, Norm, I wanted to throw out there is we're approaching the end of January, and I think all of us know that uh, we've got a Maytown meeting coming up, February, March, April, 12 weeks. Um, should we be maybe sending a letter out to our subdivisions that we've got on our you know regular agenda that if you plan to do any road acceptance, uh, you got till second week of February to submit them. I guess I'm being harsh, but I'm tired of this coming in and the end of March, we get four weeks to try to pull this off mm -hmm. and we're jumping through hoops. Mm -hmm. Or the, the third week of February or the end of February. But I just think mm -hmm. we need some time to be able to make sure Carl can get the review, we got all the as built, we got all the questions answered, and we can go to town meeting feeling confident of the of the of the roads that we're going to uh, stand behind with the town. I don't know. That's my thought. No, you're right because you don't know the situation Carl's going to be in with other towns. So yeah, I just think giving him a heads up isn't a bad idea. I, I sort of. It, it's my project management covered my rear end thought process. <laughs> I'm just trying to think of the two the two subdivisions. Did we get as built on Maple Ave? Right. So actually, all these are in the works um, right now as we speak. Yeah. There's Maple Hill Estates. There's an as built. Right. So in phase two, there's an as built. Um, these are currently in the hands of the consulting engineer, and he's reviewing those against mm -hmm. the checklist. So. In this case, these are in the works. These are known. Mm -hmm. These are carryover from the fall when they weren't ready. So mm -hmm. it's not the, the situation where the board's going to be caught flat-footed on these two, because these are already well in in advance. Yeah. Uh, these are well, you know, on the way. So. Uh, okay, I just didn't know that, Dave. That was, it, and experience has told me we've always gotten minimum amount of time with these subdivisions to try to do anything. So that's the only reason I brought it up. Well, as we, know that, as, we, as we know, these were not put on the last town meeting because they were not ready. Yeah. And that the ones that would be ready were Maple Hill Estates and Bryce Long and Phase 2. Yeah. yeah. So these are continuations of ones that are under development mm -hmm. where they have been working through the pick list and now it's getting down to very few items. So yeah. it's, okay. it's going to be more keep, keeping on top of these punch list items. 
and, and particularly noting, hey, over the winter, what happened? Yeah. You know, has anything gone wrong? Uh, so, those should not be, those shouldn't be a, a real problem. Just to let you know, uh, you know, one of the things I see coming in Central Mass Regional Planning, they're already trying to do 2050, thinking in ahead. And this goes for all boards and everything else in town here. You know, they're looking forward. Uh, uh, what do we look for? What do we do? And I, I, I'm seeing an awful lot. We are a commonwealth. We're not like, uh, let's say, New York or county government is effective. Mm -hmm. I have that funny feeling that that's what's going to be coming, is like county government. They're going to try to regionalize various things in this. You know, you've heard maybe uh, regionalizing uh, dispatch, because yeah, yeah. regional schools. Regionalizing, I can see. We just got rid of county, county government. Uh, you've got really kind of, but it's they're trying to work. It just it just seems like they're trying to work a few things in little by little. Mm -hmm. So just just mm -hmm. something for you, just put in the back of your mind. And who knows? In, in twenty fifty, you're gonna say, "Damn it, he was right," or "Damn it, that guy was stupid." That, Nick, so you're on your own, buddy. Mm -hmm. Oh, anyways, just to let you know. Okay. I'll make sure I get a hold of you in 2050. <laughs> uh, just don't step on me too hard. <laughs> I'll probably be talking sideways to you. <laughs> okay, last item, Mary Paxton Road. What's that about? I say that it is, uh, I'm not for it. Why? Because it does not meet town regulations. But why it wasn't approved? Uh, it was uh, turned down by what the building commission? Board of Appeals, wasn't it? Yeah. So, under the statute, if there's a matter coming before the zoning board, the planning board is entitled to look at it to see if the planning board has any comments or no comments. That's why this is here. It's a zoning board matter. Right. This was previously a matter before the ZBA for three items. They did not approve any of the items at that time. This has come back again for a dis an appeal of a decision, and the zoning board has been advised that they need to hear this. So that's why it's on tomorrow night, and that's why it's here tonight. Um, what, uh, Dave, what's the building inspector saying? The setbacks? Because I, 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 for some reason, it wasn't in my um, hard copy packet, so I just, I'm looking at this now. Well, the basis for the denial in this case is that it was previously denied um, because the lot is not conforming and that there are no vested rights attached to the prior structure because the prior structure was demolished more than two years ago. So that they're uh, not entitled okay. to our building permit as a right for a a single family dwelling. Okay. So if the board chooses to comment one way or the other it's on the agenda for tonight. I, I no My time. comment was I, I guess we need to follow our town regs for house lots. I mean, uh, maybe we don't need to comment. I, I don't know. Yeah. You know, I think th that would be an obvious one, mm -hmm. you know, even to them. Mm -hmm. So, I, like I say, I, I don't, not to, that's my own feeling. I don't feel that we, we don't have specific issues to yeah. the, the planning board itself. Because mm -hmm. we don't have to worry about, if they did say there's a site plan in there, should we, it said Exhibit C site plan. Is there a site plan? That's the only thing, because that usually falls under our jurisdiction. Sure, actually, the site plan is not as you would take it for a commercial situation. Site plan, in this case, just means the location of the house on the lot. It's not a site okay. plan review. That's is that site plan just for, uh, for the building inspector to see how things are laid out? Yes. Yeah, for the it's coming up right there. Yeah. There it is. So there's no, there's so no does, planning board jurisdiction does, on this. It doesn't have frontage, obviously, because I only see 101 feet. <laughs> That's right, the it frontage is not conformed. It needs 150. Correct. 
Um, the lot's too small. It doesn't conform to uh, acre and a half. Correct. So it's just a lose-lose situation. Okay. Like you said, the house was torn down two years ago, so mm -hmm. it's not as if you're replacing. Yeah. So we don't yeah. have particular concerns. Mm -hmm. What does anybody know? Is it just is this property been donated or something, or they buy it? Don't know. They bought it. They bought it. I think. It was before us once before we mentioned that it's too bad they can't go to either side. I'm not too sure if the right hand side has got enough acreage there. Mm. And asked if they could buy more to make it yeah. a legal property. But yeah, Dick, if they bought 25 feet from each owner, that would probably expand it out and maybe even giving them the uh, acreage too. Yeah. For the all the way to the back. So yeah. I'm with Norm. I don't think we have any comments on this. <laughs> no. The only thing that I had noticed, and again, I don't, I'm agreeing with you. I don't know if it's even our place or not, but in the verbiage they said, it looks like they're, you know, stating that they have precedents set for other uh, structures like this. But it looks to me, as I read through it, that it was all on existing buildings and not building a new a new building, you know, it says the use of land or structures for educational purposes or land owned or leased by a nonprofit or educational corporation. To me, that just sounds like it's existing. And if they had left the building there and wanted to turn it into a five bedroom home, they might have been okay. Mm -hmm. But they tore the building down and now they're building a new one. So I don't see how that falls in. Yeah. I'm with you, Kevin. I agree. They really don't have a leg to stand on because there's nothing there except land right now. Yeah, that's what the EPA is there to decide. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Mr. Chair, uh, there was a revised agenda that had one more item on it. Oh. Just a quick master plan update. Oh, okay. We'll lobby a couple of minutes on it. Go. Thank you. So the master plan steering committee, this, this is the master plan update for phase one. In phase two, um, so the master plan steering committee has been meeting on a monthly basis. Um, so we appreciate their engagement in this process. Their assistance has been greatly appreciated. What they're currently working on are the goals and objectives for the housing and economic development and land use chapters. There are three chapters for phase one. After that work is done, then the information will be submitted to subject matter experts for each of those sections, housing, economic development, and land use to see if they have any comments or feedback on the goals and objectives that have been suggested up to that point. After that information has been collected, then there will be a public forum. Uh, we recently found out that a phase two award has been, been made for a total of $36,730. A portion of that will be a match from the Regional Planning Commission and also a match which is town staff time. The next phase will consist of transportation and circulation and cultural and historic resources. After that, there'll only be one chapter left, which we will be uh, looking to get a phase three grant and to finish up the whole master plan within like two years and put it all together as the update. Um, in, a, in a little while, we're gonna have a press release that will indicate to the public that phase two is under work. Um, as part of what they're looking at here on the master plan steering committee, through the uh, Regional Planning Commission has recommended one final survey that would focus on the remaining chapters. So once we have that information, we would then feed that back into the process and do more of the goals and objectives for the two chapters subject to phase two and any remaining work for a phase three. After that, the um, project will be finalized. The survey will then be finalized and submitted to the public so that folks can take the survey, then that'll be brought into the into the rest of the project. So that's just a quick update on that. Um, we continue to have to work in phases, but that's the way it is. So we'll work in phases until it's done. Um, so that's it. Thank you. Yeah. Can we look at this once in a while? Hmm? It'd be interesting. I, I <laughs> we got we got that kind of time, but boy, I think the planning board ought to be you know. Some interest uh, in how they how they're looking at things. 
I think when we get to the public forum stage, that's probably going to be the appropriate time for that. Uh, the, the only thing I, I would just note, and then I guess it's, I don't know, most particularly for my last meeting, it just seems as though we are, we are really starting to pull things together on that first phase. Uh, I've got some concerns that, that I think I noted at the last meeting that uh, they were starting to propose some things that uh, I, I think were brought in from some much larger, more affluent towns, master plans, that, that didn't really fit that well. But uh, I, th I think they took that comment to heart as well uh, in taking a look at it. But like I say, it seems though it's, yeah, it's starting to really kind of come together. Mm. I'm well, just thinking that you know, it'd be interesting to see how, how it is and how it fits. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's not, I don't think there's really a good product to look at yet. Exactly right, right which is the reason mm -hmm. for the occasional updates mm -hmm. to the planning board as we've done here. As we have more work and more of a work product is put together, the updates will be, you know, we'll continue to update. And when we have a product to provide for the board's knowledge, we'll, we'll be, you know, be, be distributing that. Hey, Dave and, and Norm, this is Tim. Just got a quick question. Have you been, um, I guess, requested or tasked for the upcoming budget season for either one of you for planning board and or planner? Have you been tasked with that yet? Uh, Dave has met with the TA regarding uh, our budget for the upcoming okay. year. All right, good. I just I, I forgot to ask the uh, head FICON lady if that is, uh, that process had started yet. Yeah. He hasn't taken anything out of our budget, has he? Uh, That's what I was getting at. Yeah. <laughs> right. So the stipends are in place as a thousand dollars last year, and the regional planning commission assessment is still there under the operating side of the budget. Not out of the planning board to account. There's the new one. Hey, we're actually we're looking for this. Okay, so it's up. To, okay, another two hundred bucks. Is, okay, that's good. I'll get this out tomorrow. Thank okay. you for that. And then the planner salary is consistent with the, the most recent table. It's finally been adjusted, so that's current, which is appreciated. Good. And to me, sure your pay rate is as well. Okay. Done her first. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything to, else to come before the board? I want my thousand dollars. What? What's that? I want my thousand dollars. My thousand dollars. I heard a motion to adjourn. Second. Is there any discussion? Roll call vote. Kevin. Aye. Tim. Aye. Marilyn. Aye. Dick. Aye. Anderson. Aye. We are adjourned.